phase three really uh, got some ideas for phase three and I, and I one of them is a bit of a I, I want to increase the vehicle's range and I've got an idea and I don't know if it's going to work and I really don't know if it's going to work so you know ride along with me because I don't know if it's going to work I've been told it will it's a great idea cheap light to extend range by quite a long way my name is Andrew St. Pierre White. Join me as I build four wheel trucks and travel to the remotest parts of the world. I'm a prisoner of this hill. And oh, I hit a kangaroo. I hit my first two kangaroos within about five minutes of each other. I was about an hour and a half out of town, rural area, 730 ish, doing 100 ish. Joey came out. Saw it instant, bang, and I could hear the, the axles take up. Oh, oh no, I hate hitting animals. Really just... Oh. So I kind of slowed down a bit and within minutes, grey, a big grey. I mean, he, I could see him. It was, he was higher than the bonnet. And I saw him and just had... Dah! It was that kind of instant... Dah! And bang! And I was probably doing 90. Uh, and it hit here, but I, I, I mean, there's no damage, no twist, nothing. And I could feel the whole car go, Gah! and this, the larger bore was recommended to me. And I was told one day you're going to need it. Maybe I just did. This is a 130 liter tank that comes out of a Land Cruiser. 79 dual cab same tank comes out of the 76 wagon will it fit now my investigation so far have met with two resounding yes it will fit it's not difficult it's quite a simple conversion but then i asked the question have you done it yourself and in both cases well one of them anyway was no it's trap this hanger yeah. These two hangers go, take the hanger and you take the tank out. Okay. Have to then the take same. the mounts out. And then take the mounts off. These bolts are easy. And the other one, I couldn't really get a clear answer. So the question is, will the 130 tank fit in the 78? Why is it a good idea? Land Cruiser 78 Troop Carrier carries two 90-litre tanks, the main front tank and the sub-litre tank, as standard equipment. To increase the range, currently a total of 180 litres of fuel is pretty good by anybody's standards, but still for me not quite enough. There are a couple of options. One of them would be for me to fit a 180 litre tank from a company like Long Ranger, they make very, very good tanks, and put it in here. The tanks are made of mild steel, they are themselves really quite heavy. And an extra 180 litres gives 270 litres to me. That's a bit of overkill. It also, once full, puts my vehicle too close to max to GVM. Could even exceed it. So, here's an alternative that is not only to me a better, but far, far cheaper. If it works. I got this one for $200. I have been looking for a while, there are not that many of them come up for sale, and they range from anything from $200 to $400 used. This one has been on the vehicle for a couple of months and has done about a thousand kilometers, so by all intents and purposes, it's brand new. And I've brought it to Quick Pitch for the guys there to give me a little bit of hand and to borrow their lift. It's about there where my thumb is. Is it where it is? No. It's not going to fit. It's not even close. It's not going to fit. This one, sir. It's not going to fit. It's not. You know what? No, no. Try the length of the tank itself. It's 660 from flange to flange. No chance in the world. It's not happening. He's not laughing. Sorry, why you He must look at his face on the other side. Oh, what a pity. Two people that claim to be real experts. I mean, these guys are, oh, they are. I mean, they are, said, go straight in. Oh, well, it was a good idea 
at the time. So but what this was was part of uh, phase three of the troop carrier, which includes, well, it did include replacing the tank. And secondly, it includes um, a system where I'm going to be able to boost my mobile signal so when I'm traveling in the outback, I can get much better cell reception. I've done a lot of research on it. I've got a product that I believe will work very, very well. I'm going to be doing other bits and pieces to the cruisers. Some of them are actually really, really interesting. And I thought of all of those things, the most innovative would be the fuel tank upgrade. Oh well. Travelling in the outback is a challenge when it comes to communicating with communicating with home and also uploading pictures to my Instagram, things as I travel, I like to keep things rolling and often find myself with no mobile signal at all. Not common in Australia, it's a very, very big country, so it's not all covered. Although it's quite well covered considering its size. However, to increase the chances of being able to get a good mobile signal, I've got myself one of these. Now, the purpose of it, here you go, it's made by, let me just show you the box so you can see who it's made by, Cellfire Geo Smart Signal Repeater. What this basically does, and I'm being, this is simplistic, it takes a mobile signal and boosts it increases it in amplitude and therefore the signal we get on our phone or our mobile devices is far 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 better and it can easily turn a, a weak signal into a strong signal okay you do need some signal you need to be in an area so it's not as if it's a magic device it's going to be able to give you mobile phone reception when you're out of range but when you're in range even on the edges or even on the periphery you will get a boosted signal that's the promise anyway the system comes in three basic components. The repeater, the antenna, which is on the back, and the internal antenna, which I've mounted up here. That I won't need to get to. Once I've mounted it, I can mount it permanently out of the way. But before I get it going, I've got to download some software onto my phone. Time at last, I think you will agree, for me to fit some proper lighting. Now, those of you who've been following the build of the truck will know that I fitted some uh, semi-floods uh, made by Rigid on the front to just as a bit of a stopgap, and now I'm starting to get serious. And when I decided on the Rigid, I thought, well, let's get the best money can buy. And if I think about the value for money, it probably wasn't all that good. I mean, they're great lights. They're, they're Quality is first rate, there's no question about that. But they were close to $600. And I thought, well, maybe the way to go is to find something in, not in the budget range. I don't want to spend a little, I want good quality, I want reliability, I want performance. But do I need to spend an enormous amount of money to get that? Well, I'm not sure if I do. So, I've gone for, it's Chinese made, but it's an Australian company, so it's Australian design. And half of the stuff you buy in this country is the same. So, um, it's made by a company called Road Vision. They were recommended to me as a good quality light somewhere in the middle and will give me great reliability and performance. And that is what I've got here. So, I haven't even looked at it yet. Uh, 20 inches. Uh, we'll talk about where I'm going to fit it because there are a number of thoughts I've had on that as well. Um, have a quick look. So the, the, the idea of this particular product is that, it certainly feels good, is that it is flood, but it does, uh, sorry, spot, spotlight, range, but it does have a flood component and I can actually see there is the flood component on the side there. So of course the next thing to do is to wire it up and decide where to fit it. I'm at Quick Pitch Campers. This is Heiner. He is from your company called Klarman Automotive Solutions and he is a specialist and I've seen his work. Very, very good That's at good. automotive installations. So Heiner's going to help me with the installation but also help me choose where I must put it. Yes. So there is uh, not really that much that we can do in these options. You don't want it on top of the bull bar. No. Because first of all, that's illegal. Second, yes. it's going to be in your way. Yep. So the big question is going to be, do we mount it underneath 
or do we change the spotties, put them underneath and put the bull bar on the bottom? I think it all comes down to the mounting brackets. So we're gonna have a look at it. Have a look at the mounting brackets, hold it in position there, hold it in position there and see what works best. See what works best. The trouble with having it high up, I, I was watching one of Ronnie Dahl's videos yeah. um, and he was, he was traveling in the desert with his lights on and I could see so much light coming off the bonnet and it was almost as if it was blinding him but I wasn't sure. So I want to make sure that if I put it up there it's a permanent fix. Have you ever driven with one that has been mounted on the roof? Yes, I'm driving with one that's mounted on the roof myself. Is it a good idea or a bad idea in terms of As reflection from the bonnet? I'm not bothered by the reflection myself because it is actually so bright the, uh, the bar on top, but it's personal preference. I would so. like to just try it and have a look at it. Yeah. Because I've got, a, I've got the, 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 the visor. Yeah. And I'm thinking that maybe the visor will be sufficient yeah. to, so that the light on the bonnet is minimal. Yeah. If there's too much light in the bonnet, then I don't want it up top. Okay. Can we mount it up top there? Can we just run a cable, mount Absolutely. it up top there and just get, for me to get a, yeah. a vision of what it might be? Yeah, definitely. Okay, turn on. So that's probably the angle about, the angle is probably about right, about there, yes. I can see some, I'm getting reflection off the items in the, in the, in the, in the workshop, not on, it wouldn't reflect off the sky, the sky's dark at night, I mean it's, it's it, it. all I'm seeing is, is some reflection on here, but I'm only getting the reflection from the roof and from the, the tools around the workshop. I'm getting very little direct light on here, if any at all. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a good spot. I think it's gonna be a good spot, don't you think? Yeah, I would say so, yes. I actually think it's worth, because of the, of the sun visor, this is gonna be the best spot for it, for, for it. Fitting light bars to vehicles like this is not as simple as it might seem. <clears throat> The problem is with a vehicle like this that has, as standard, not particularly good headlamps. The light is very orange, and so the eye compensates quite quickly for an orange light. Then you add something like this, LED, uh, particularly in those people that add blue LEDs, which I actually think is a bad idea, generally speaking, for this reason. Now the light is very bright, it is very white, the eyes have to compensate and do quite quickly. And when you then come off high beam, turn them off, with the standard lights, one is almost completely blinded because the eyes take so long to compensate after this very, very bright white light. So not only am I upgrading the lights, I have to, for safety's sake, do something about the standard headlamps. Yes, make them brighter, but more importantly, make the light from those, the headlamps, whiter so my, light, my eyes compensate more quickly to the car's own headlamps when driving on low beam. That looks good. That right. looks very good. There's a good strong, those are good strong brackets. But the brackets are really heavy duty as well. So I think if anything, the, the body itself will let go of the car but uh, with the panel washers, uh, we should prevent that. That looks great. I'm anticipating the first question that people will ask when they see it, and they'll say, why didn't you go longer? You could easily fit a 30 inch on there. And my answer to that is, it's sensible. It does the job. I'm very happy with that. Next thing, of course, is to test it in a dark place. I went to Quick Pitch and chatted to Hino and asked them for a battery monitoring system. And this is the one I fitted. It's made by Victron. It's a very simple unit. It literally is, I mean, I just wired it up myself. It was that easy. And it's giving me vital information about my battery. If I come to it and press any of these buttons, it will activate and start taking a reading. At the moment, voltage is 12.8 volts. My batteries are at a hundred percent. My amp hour at the moment is neutral. The vehicle is sitting with nothing running, nothing turned on in the vehicle, 
and it's inside. So we're sitting neutral. Let's go and turn something on inside the cab and see what happens. So I'm going to turn on my Snowmaster cool drink fridge located between my seats. The fridge is now running. Minus 38 watts. Minus 2.95 amp. That is what the fridge is currently consuming. Using the Red Arc DC to DC charger, I just plug into a solar panel. It's automatically wired up. I have to do nothing but plug it in, plug and play. And it switches over and the monitor will tell me now what's happening. And there the solar panel charge has kicked in, takes a few seconds. So as you can see, the panel is now supplementing some of the current that is being drawn by the battery, about half of it. You know, when you're on a trip, it's really good to know how good, you, how well your batteries are, are performing. And, uh, you know, and, the, and if you are going to have a fridge or freezer turning off in the middle of the night and spoiling your food, that to me is worth a, a great deal. I've not had one before because, to be honest with you, I didn't know which one to fit. This one seems to be doing the job and it wasn't expensive. Join me next time when I take the vehicle out for a run down the west coast of Australia with the family before Christmas and I'm going to test the lights and I'm going to test the mobile phone amplifier. That's going to be interesting. See you then. For front row seats to everything I do, click the Patreon button to find out more.